Hi, I'm Adam Drake. Today I'm gonna to show you some modifications I do to the buggy fuel tank on my Mugen MBX8. It's gonna be installing the 90 degree fuel line fitting and also how I glue and secure the fuel line clips to the side of the fuel tank. Okay, so as you can see, I have all the tools needed to install the 90 degree fitting. The 90 degree fitting, uh, you can use Losi used to sell a Efra fitting that you could get in like a two pack. I don't believe they sell that anymore. I now offer these 90 degree fittings. Um, we don't have them on the website yet, but you can message me and they're really inexpensive. Now there's nothing wrong with the stock fitting on the Mugen tank. It actually seals really good. It works well. My main reason for switching to the 90 degree fitting is it allows the fuel line to come out of the tank at just a little bit tighter bend. I'm always afraid with this fitting because it sticks out a little bit farther that when I go to 90 and loop it back that the fuel line can kind of get pinched or even can kind of hit the front of the body. So what I like to do is just remove the stock fitting, which is pretty simple. You just remove the uh, the nut there for the fitting and then you can just go ahead and push that all the way in and then you can take and just kind of open the tank shake until you get the fuel line to come close enough to the top to where you can pull it out with some needle nose pliers the other thing is the fuel line that comes in the mugen tank it's a little bit thinner and softer and the reason for that is to allow the clunk to be able to move really easy. But over time, the fuel line will kind of get even softer. So I like to upgrade to the Flashpoint fuel line, FP2111. It's a little bit thicker, more durable, just lasts a little bit longer. But what you'll wanna do is inside the tank where the fuel line rides between the baffling, you'll wanna open that up just slightly, just enough for the difference in the uh, thicker fuel line. So I'll just take a pair of scissors and then I'm just gonna cut probably, I don't know, maybe two millimeters off all the way down to the base. And then the top portion will just kind of fall off and this bottom uh, portion of the tank, you'll wanna reach in with some needle nose pliers and once you get a hold of it, you'll just kind of grab and pull that out. Then the top piece will just fall out. So again, you're just kind of making that channel a little bit wider because you have a larger diameter uh, fuel line. You will want to make sure that that cut is pretty uh, smooth. So use some sharp scissors because you don't want it to have jagged edges to where it can kind of wear or cut into the fuel line. From there, I'll take a body reamer, and I'm not actually making this hole uh, larger all the way through. I'm just wanting to put a little bit of taper on it so that the fuel line goes into the tank a little bit easier. And again, you'll wanna make sure, kind of shake the tank, make sure that um, none of that material goes into the fuel tank. From there, You'll just take a piece of fuel line that's about eight inches long. So I try to do it about double the length of what I need because when I push this all the way in, I'm actually gonna pull it out the top, secure the filter, and um, then I'll, I'll kind of pull it back through the tank. So you can, you can wet the end of the fuel line, but with that taper, it's, it's not too difficult once you get it started. You'll just wanna kind of press in and turn at the same time to get it started. And then you'll just continue to do that, just slowly pushing the fuel line all the way into the tank. And like I said, you'll wanna put or push this fuel line in considerably farther than what it needs to, to go in to work properly, because we're gonna adjust that later. Because by putting this additional line in, it's gonna make it easier to grab with your needle nose pliers to pull it out the top. 
So as you can see, I've got a bit more than half. The line is kind of bowed towards the top. So I'll just grab that, pull the excess line out the top, and then I use the stock filter or clunk. Press that all the way on, make sure it's secured really good. And then I'll pull this back and push the clunk down into the tank. So now this next step is really, really critical. You need to make sure that the clunk is positioned far enough towards the back of the tank to where it's able to draw fuel all the way until the tank is empty. But you also need to pull the clunk far enough forward to where when you flip upside down, the clunk is able to go all the way to the top of the tank. So I'll just go ahead and just slowly kind of pull that back, flip the tank upside down, and then look in and make sure that it's able to again, fall all the way to the top of the tank. If, if anything, you actually wanna go maybe one millimeter farther than what you would think because you don't want it to drag on this kind of set in area that has clearance for the linkage because when we push the 90 degree fitting in it potentially could push the fuel line in that that extra millimeter so i have it positioned you can hear that the clunk flops around it you can hear it flopping and and clicking on the top so there i will cut the fuel line to where i have three or four millimeters of line um, sticking out of the tank. And then from there, you can spray a little bit of like motor spray or brake cleaner, or just use a little bit of saliva. Take the 90 degree fitting, do the same thing, just kind of moisten it a little bit. And then you'll wanna make sure that this fitting is pushed all the way in, because the fitting has a little step on it. So you'll feel when it gets pushed in, when it clears past that inner wall of the tank, and then it'll kind of like almost lock it into place. But then you'll wanna take, flip the tank upside down, make sure that the clunk still goes to the top. In this case, it's not. So when I pushed this 90 degree fitting in, it also pushed the line in a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is pull this 90 degree fitting out Go ahead and push the line back in, but not quite as far as I did the last time. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove just a little bit. Moisten the 90 fitting a little bit. Push that back in to where it kind of snaps into place. Check again. Now you can hear, it goes all the way to the top, goes to the bottom. You look in, make sure that it's sitting back in this recessed area. And then before securing the additional line, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the uh, fuel line clips because I like to route my fuel line a lot shorter than what the kit kind of recommends and I don't use the external filter. So what you're gonna to wanna to do, I still use the standard Mugen clips, but I'll use flush cutters and remove the excess material so that it can sit flat on the tank. And then on the clip that is used to secure both the fuel and the pressure line, I'm gonna just remove this extra piece and then I'll use a nail file and you're gonna to wanna to just scuff up the back side of the clip really good. If you don't scuff it up, it's not gonna stick. So it'll stick short term, but when the tank and the car gets hot and um, you know from the vibration of the engine and everything else, 
you're gonna end up having a problem where the clip pops off. So if you do this when the tank's new and everything's clean and the clips are new, um, it tends to work best, but you'll just scuff, uh, scuff the clips really good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing and scuff the tank in the areas where I'm gonna secure the fuel line clips. Okay, so once you got the clip scuffed and the tank scuffed, it doesn't really take too much glue. Just maybe a drop or two for the clip where both uh, fuel lines are gonna connect. I like to just take and kind of spread the clip just a little bit because these are the stock Mugen clips, so they're, they're intended for the Mugen line, which is a little bit thinner. So I'll go ahead Make sure that the clip is aligned. And then, I don't know, 10 seconds or so, I'll just want to hold and apply a little bit of pressure just to make sure that that clip doesn't shift or move. And then I'll go ahead, do the same thing with the single clip that's going to route the fuel line to the carburetor. And you'll want to make sure that these clips are in line with one another so that the line is, is as straight as possible. I'll do the same thing with this. I'll spread the clip just a little bit because I know I'm gonna have um, the thicker flash point fuel line. Again, just apply a little bit of pressure, wait 10 seconds or so. And then before installing the rest of the fuel line. I'll actually just set this tank to the side, let it sit for 10 minutes or so, so the glue can fully cure. If you want, you could take a little bit of additional glue and kind of run it around the clip, but for the most part, it doesn't, it doesn't usually take a whole lot of glue. So I'm gonna go ahead, set this to the side, wait about 10 minutes, let the glue fully cure, and then I'll move on to the final step, which is in installing the fuel line that's gonna come from the 90 fitting to the carburetor. Okay, so now the clips are fully secured. We waited 10 minutes or so, went ahead and let the glue fully cure. Again, just wanna make sure that the clips, the front clip and back clip line up so that the fuel line um, is going in a straight line just to make it as clean as possible. From there, I'll go ahead and I'll cut maybe three or four millimeters off the end of the fuel line, slide it over a pair of needle nose pliers, open it up, and then you'll just want to kind of push and twist the fuel line inside of that, that piece you just cut off. And what this is going to do is basically work as a hose clamp. So it's going to just make this bond over the 90 degree fitting a little bit tighter. Again, I'll just go ahead, lick that a little bit. You can spray motor spray or whatever just to make it slide over this 90 degree fitting a little bit easier. And then from there, I'll go ahead, press the line into the clips. And then I'll cut off and leave a little bit of excess. Like the carburetor is gonna be about here, so I'm gonna go a little bit farther you waste a little bit of line, but um, you could measure that exactly if you wanted. But I'll go ahead, put the fuel tank grommets, put the splash guard on. I'll do the same thing where I cut off three or four millimeters of fuel line once I have this length correct. And then I'll install it on that end so that when you push the fuel line onto the um, carburetor fuel inlet, again, it just secures it and just makes it a bit nicer and cleaner than the standard fitting that normally sticks out straight and then you have to loop the, the line. It, it's pretty much doing the same thing, it's just allowing you to make a tighter bend without pinching the fuel line. Uh, this is something that I've done 
uh, pretty much from the very beginning when I started running for Mugen just to make the fuel line routing a little bit cleaner and um, just wanted to share with you guys how I do that.